Welcome to Jazz Live at Home, a part of the BNY Mellon Presents Jazz Live series presented by the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. Hello and welcome back to BNY Mellon Presents Jazz Live at Home, presented by the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. I'm Terry Bell and I hope you've been enjoying this series and learning about the artists who make it all happen. Today we're visiting with drummer David Throckmorton. Born in Washington, Pennsylvania, Throck, as he's fondly called, followed in his father Bob's footsteps, who was a jazz drummer also. David picked up the sticks as a toddler, started playing in the school band in the fourth grade, and he hasn't stopped playing since then. David has developed his gift and is a true force of nature on the drums. He draws on many musical influences, including hip hop, R&B, and jazz. Throck has performed throughout the world with artists including Maynard Ferguson, David Fuzinski, Tony Gray, Hate, and Javon Jackson. He's one third of the exciting jazz group DTC Organ Trio with guitarist Dan Wilson and organist Cliff Barnes. He also leads or co-leads his own ensembles including Bean, Bath Trio, Smasher Wagon, and the David Throckmorton Quartet. He created the Pittsburgh Drum Exchange with drummers Lou Ross and Sean McGregor, performs master classes and clinics all over the world. He's so much fun to watch. He puts everything into each and every performance. And we're so fortunate to have him based right here in Pittsburgh and to have him as a regular performer in the Trust's BMY Mellon Presents Jazz Live series. We hope you enjoy this visit today with David Throckmorton. Hello everybody, my name is David Throckmorton. I'm a drummer based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm recording this from my home in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania where I grew up in Washington County. I grew up in uh, the city of Washington, a little bit south of here. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, my family's healthy, which is the most important thing. All of my friends that I'm close to are healthy. I'm thankful for that. 2020 has been an interesting year for all of us. Um, it started off very strange for me in January. On the 9th, uh, my father passed away. Um, my father's name is Bob Throckmorton. Uh, he was a professional drummer among other things. He also made leather goods, which sometimes people see me out with. My leather cymbal bag or my stick bag or some of my friends that play drums have some, have some of his work. He passed away on the 9th kind of suddenly. So the year just started off pretty crazy. He's the reason I play drums, seeing drums growing up and having drums in the house, seeing him perform. Also seeing my big brother Rob perform. That's why I started playing. So this year just got off to a really strange start and COVID hit and everything's changed for all of us. As far as watching anything interesting, um, since this virus, um, I've been trying to watch a bunch of movies with my sons, Ross and Noah. Ross is 17, Noah is 14. Ross is 17, so he's still, he's getting a little more into being by himself. It's not as cool to hang out with dad as much anymore. Just lots of different movies, um, maybe some that are I shouldn't be showing them yet, but we're starting to catch up on some classics. I've been watching a little bit of stand-up comedy, trying to get some laughs in, uh, some Chappelle, some older stuff, Eddie, Chris Rock. I've been watching this show, Better Things, on FX, which I really like. My son's trying to get me to watch uh, Breaking Bad. I hope to get to that soon. Well, I'm a pretty big listener. I try to listen a lot, always. Strangely, with as much time as I have on my hands now, I'm not really listening more than normal, but I'm still trying to listen a lot. Uh, taking a lot of walks, always putting new music on my phone to check out. A lot of classic stuff that I've always listened to, uh, just favorites that you go back to. Um, so a lot of Ornette Coleman, uh, a lot of Old New Dreams, a lot of Thelonious Monk, John Coltrane, Stuff I grew up listening to, like Chick Corea, a lot of John Schofield. Let's just check out his new record on ECM, which is cool. A lot of hip hop. You know, I, I graduated high school in 91. 
grew up listening to hip hop and it's still a huge part of what I'm into. My age probably shows the stuff that I favor. A Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, the first three or four Public Enemy records, uh, Gangstar, anything produced by DJ Premier, E Don's Beauty and the Beat record, I've been listening to a lot. The first four or five Beastie Boys records. Not to uh, downplay the later work, but the first four or five in particular. The Mad Lib Quasimodo record, the first one, and a bunch of other stuff. The Zarface records too, which is uh, 7L and Esoteric, along with Inspector Deck from Wu-Tang. So that's some stuff I've been listening to. I don't know what the significance is. I mean, it's just music that I've always enjoyed and stuff that I find particularly unique to the individual artist, stuff that you can't get anywhere else but from that artist. The last trip I had to Japan in 2014, uh, my good friend Tony Gray is a great bass player from England who lives in Erie, Pennsylvania. We went over to do some recording live shows and a DVD with a great guitar player named uh, Tomi Asuhate or Hate. Um, a DVD came out of that from the Blue Note. And that was just a fun trip to, to hang with Tony, get to spend some time in Japan with him. The, the first time I was in Japan was with Maynard Ferguson's band with Paul Thompson. My friend who lives in Pittsburgh, we always play together. We weren't making any money back then, so it was a little tough. I was making a little more money on this second trip, playing with Hate, so we got to experience some things and get out and see more. At the show, there was a couple from Japan that came out to see us play. They were big fans of, of, of Hate's. The first night, they wanted to get a photo with me and talk to me a little bit. I don't speak Japanese, but we were able to communicate somewhat. The next night they came out to see the show again. And it was funny because they took a picture of me with me the second night holding a picture of the three of us from the night before. If we played a third night, they would have had the picture from that night of us holding the picture. It was just this picture within a picture. It was really funny. And also a Pittsburgh bass guitar player who lives in, uh, well, not bass, born in Pittsburgh, uh, Andy Bianco happened to text me when I was in Japan for that show, asking me if I was playing anyway, anywhere that day. So I thought he was trying to see if I was playing in Pittsburgh. And I told him I was in Japan and he said, I'm in Japan. So he must've known I was there and he came out to the show, which made that also a memorable and fun show. On some level, the family thing is obvious with my brother and my dad playing drums. I also grew up, growing up in Washington, I had a bunch of uh, really close friends that were involved with music with me. My friends Will Brock, Damon Cook, Eric Cargrove, Josh Dunleavy, Ruben Brock, uh, Brent Tabina, and others. And my brother, of course, if I didn't say that. We always played music together, checked out music from jazz to hip hop, rock, soul. All that stuff has been very influential, as well as my friends that I play with often. You know, guys like Ben Opie, Paul Thompson, Josh Wolf, Tony Gray, John Shannon, Chris Parker. There's so many, I don't want to slight anybody. Jeff Grubbs, uh, Cliff Barnes, Dan Wilson, Red Beach, the guys in Good Brother Earl, Bill DC. All those people I play with regularly are very influential, seeing how they handle their business, being able to share music with them, improvise with them, interact. That's really what keeps me going.
I'll tell you a couple quick ones. Um, one, I'm a huge NBA fan. I love pro basketball. I'm curious to see if they restart the season here soon. I'm not sure if they should, but if they do, I'll be watching. And secondly, is I make paintings. This painting behind me is one of mine. I have a few of these up in my house. Um, I've always been a fan of visual art. I didn't paint so much as a kid. Maybe eight or nine years ago, a friend of mine named Jeff Beck, who's a great bass player, used to live in Pittsburgh. He teaches in State College, PA. He's an art teacher. And uh, one day he brought me some brushes, canvases, and a small easel and encouraged me to get started. And I had a lot of fun pretty busy with it for a few years there, like 2012 through 2015, I was painting a lot. The last four or five years, I've been painting a little less. I've been trying to get to it a little bit more since the shutdown, since the pandemic. And uh, a lot of people were trying to encourage me to, to do it more and sell paintings. That's always felt a little weird to me, but uh, I've sold one painting, I've given another one to a friend. So maybe I'll start trying to make some of this stuff more public. You know, I have a whole basement of these things. I guess the goal is for people to see them. So I'll try to get them out there a little more. I'm not sure about this one yet. I've had some people ask me to do some of this virtual, virtual concerts. The only one I've really done is with uh, an organ trio that I co-lead with my friends, Dan Wilson and Cliff Barnes. We have another one coming up in July. So I've never really done much as far as um, virtual drum lessons or virtual concerts or virtual, uh, or even selling music through those platforms. I hope to record some more in this downtime and maybe I can start trying to get some of that music out. And that's the way I'm you know, thinking a little bit differently about it. First of all, I want to thank you for supporting myself, all of my friends, and all the great music in Pittsburgh. I hope to see you all very soon, and just be good to one another. You know, I've been really enjoying my time with my family, with my sons during this break. Be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to one another. We could all use it right now. There's a lot of division right now, and just try to love one another. Hope to see you all soon. Thank you so much. We hope you've enjoyed this inside look at Pittsburgh's jazz scene and the artists who make it so very special. We'd like to thank our sponsor, BMI Mellon, for their continued support of the Jazz Eye series. And on behalf of all of us at the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and spending this time with us. We couldn't do it without you. We hope that you'll consider making a donation. It is through your generous support that we've been able to bring you world-class arts experiences for more than 35 years and to your home during this time of intermission. Please go to trustarts.org slash support jazz. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.